Hello! If you're new here, I'm John Cartwright, and I talk about the Wii a lot. And a question I'm often asked is, which is the better Wii? A standard Nintendo Wii, or a Nintendo Wii U? Of course, the Wii U's backwards compatible with the Wii, and can do pretty much anything a standard Wii can do. But is there a clear winner? Which one produces the best image quality? Which one has the best experience? Are there limitations to either of these systems? Let's find out! Take it away, pre-recorded John! The original Wii, I think, has one of the most interesting libraries out there. There are so many hidden gems among the mountains of shovelware, and you'll find so many different games that other systems just can't offer, both in controls and just how unique they can be. That said, there are of course two different options of how to play Wii games natively, the Wii and the Wii U. They both share the same architecture, and in fact that dates back to the GameCube. The GameCube, Wii, and Wii U are all backwards compatible with each other. It's just that the Wii U's disk drive can't read GameCube discs, and so Nintendo opted not to have any backwards compatibility on the user side. Although homebrew apps like Nintendo can put it straight back in just by using game backups rather than discs. It can even work with GameCube controllers using the GameCube adapter. So that means the Wii U natively offers three different systems. GameCube, Wii, and Wii U. And then there's also Virtual Console with NES, and Super Nintendo, and N64, and Game Boy Advance, and Turbo Graphics. It is a great legacy system. And of course, being from the HD era, it offers HDMI output, so the image quality is mostly very good, and I say mostly because there's one downside to the Wii U's HDMI, and that is its only limited range. If you've used any HDMI console, you may recognize limited range and full range RGB. Almost every single system out there dating back to the 360 has this feature, but for some reason the Wii U doesn't. It only offers limited range, making the colors look a little bit washed out. That's why in some comparisons between Wii U games and Switch ports, the Switch ports end up looking a bit more vibrant and colorful. If you put the Switch to limited range, the colors end up looking pretty much the exact same. But yeah, that is a downside to the Wii U's image quality. That said, the standard Wii only supports analog output, such as Composite, Component, SCART, and S-Video. There's a problem with the Wii as well, where the component output just isn't that high quality. It's still the best picture you can get from the system, but even compared to the GameCube's component, which I'm sure all of us have used, it is actually a bit of a downgrade. There are mods for the Wii, like Wii Jewel, giving it HDMI output, but today we're just looking at the standard out-of-the-box features. Although we are using Homebrew to get the best image quality we can. If you saw one of our recent videos, then you'll know that the Wii has a system-level blur applied to everything, and using USB USB Loader GX, we can get rid of this blur by turning off the deflicker setting. This was intended for CRTs, but is on all the time and just puts a blur on the entire image. It's not anti-aliasing, it's just a blur. So let's answer a very simple question. Does the Wii or Wii U give you a better Wii image? Well to answer plainly, the Wii. So the Wii U actually has a problem, and if you've used the Wii U in Wii mode before, you may know what I'm talking about, and that is the black borders. Wii mode, frankly, isn't scaled properly. It doesn't fill the screen, there are mild problems with the aspect ratio, and it just ends up looking a little bit more blurry. But is it actually that bad? Well, it's gonna depend on your sensitivity to this stuff. To get the most accurate comparison for this specific clip, we're gonna use the Wii via component, and then Wii U via the exact same component cable. Although the Wii U's outputting 1080p, while the Wii's outputting 480p. That said, the Wii U's definitely still blurrier. It may not be obvious just putting it side by side, but if we zoom in, you'll notice that objects on the Wii that still maintain their sharp pixels end up getting a bit more blurry on Wii U. I mean, just look at Link's face over here. It definitely starts to lose a bit more detail on the Wii U than it does on the Wii. It's the same for text in 2D HUDs. I mean, look right here. The text for the amount of arrows left on the Wii is much clearer than Wii U. But that said, if we're not zooming into everything, then Wii U's image quality definitely isn't terrible. It's just that it is a downgrade from the original system. But we're giving Wii U component here. What if we utilize all its strengths and give it HDMI? Does that make a difference? Well, kinda. It doesn't fix the blur, but it does give the system more accurate colors. That said, if you were to give the Wii an HDMI mod, then that would win in essentially every category possible, especially as the Wii Dual mod supports both limited range and full range RGB, unlike the Wii U. 
There's long been a misconception that the Wii U enhances Wii games, and that's frankly just not the case. It's not emulating the system, it's just booting up as if it were a Wii, but its scaling problems do interfere with the image. And even though the Wii U's outputting at 1080p, that doesn't mean it's rendering at 1080p. This is still a 480p render, it's just being upscaled so nothing's really changing. Although something we noted in our last Wii video is many Wii games don't run in the correct aspect ratio, or at least they're stretched to. See, there's a new option in USB Loader GX called Frame Buffer, and this presents Wii games as they're rendered before the stretch. And so what the system is actually rendering is this, and then it just stretches the image out, making the image quality a little bit blurrier. So there's a lot of different blurs on the Wii, and especially the Wii U. Wii U's got the scaling problems, and then it's got the frame buffer stretch, and then it's also got the deflicker filter. And so we can help with a bunch of that. We can turn off the deflicker filter, and we can maintain the frame buffer, but that's got issues in itself, as many games were designed for the stretch, and so some elements may end up looking a bit too oval rather than circular. But there is another option, and that's playing in 4x3, where nothing is stretched. And in fact, the Wii menu itself looks so much better in 4x3 than it does in 16x9. 4x3 will end up looking sharper for almost every single game on the system. Look at this shot in Twilight Princess. This is with the deflicker filter off with 4x3 and 16x9, and because 16x9 is being stretched just a bit, there is a blur to it, which 4x3 doesn't have. Now, doing this, of course, you lose widescreen, so is that worth the trade-off? And for me personally, probably not. Well, it depends on the game. Wario Land The Shake Dimension, for instance, is a 4x3 game, but the 16x9 mode just gives you some borders, so that's stretching the image unnecessarily so. So that game's much better played in 4x3 than it is 16x9. Now, Wii mode on the Wii U has very limited settings. If you go into the system settings, you'll see that most of them are entirely stripped away. All you can do is manage channels and save files. That's it. All settings must be applied from the Wii U menu, meaning you've got to turn the system on, wait for it to boot up, press the settings icon, wait for settings to load, go to the TV options, and OK. Where's 4x3? So to get 4x3 on the Wii U, you can't use 1080p, you can't use 720p, you must use 480p, meaning you get no upscale. That said, it does work, and it does look pretty good. It's just a hassle to go through so many menus. I have seen some people say that 480p in Wii mode looks better than 1080p, but I'm not entirely sure that's true. I'll let you guys be the judge, but personally speaking, I think the upscale looks better. While it's a bit tedious to go through all these settings when adjusting Wii mode on the Wii U, you can boot the Wii operating system much faster just by holding the B button when booting up the system. That makes it boot straight to the Wii rather than the Wii U. Although even when doing that, a standard Wii boots up so much quicker. But a standard Wii doesn't have the gamepad, and using the gamepad you can play off-TV Wii and GameCube games. Although it's only used as a display, and unless using some homebrew apps, you can't use the Wii U buttons themselves. Gotta play like this, so it's a good thing that this part here is actually a sensor bar. Neat! It's also worth noting a few other limitations. As a GameCube, the Wii U is pretty good. Of course, you've got to have a USB adapter, and the memory cards are digital because there's no slot for the memory cards, and discs don't work, so you've got to use game backups. Obviously, the Wii's got more perks using actual discs and actual memory cards, but I think the real problem with the Wii U's GameCube compatibility is there's no GBA support. Games like Four Source Adventures and Nintendo Puzzle Collection simply can't interact with the Game Boy Advance. The GameCube adapter just can't do that, but it does work on a standard Wii and, of course, the GameCube. And while the GameCube adapter works with Nintendo, there's a bunch of standard Wii games it won't work with. Sonic Colors, for instance, supports the GameCube controller, but playing on the Wii U, even with the adapter, it won't get recognized. And despite the Wii U having a lot more internal storage, it still has the exact same limitations as a Wii. There's just 512 megabytes of storage here. So, all in all, the only real perks of using a Wii U is one, the Wii U gamepad, and also HDMI out, but even that has its limitations of just being limited range. But many TVs today only have HDMI out, and so for some, the Wii U is the most natural and elegant option. It may not be the best, but it does the job. So there you have it! While the Wii U is still a pretty good Wii, it does have a bunch of limitations that put the original system just frankly ahead of it in pretty much every category. The only real winning side is the HDMI port, but even then, 
you can give this one HDMI if you want to. But either way, if you've got a Wii U in your setup and you're using it as a Wii, I'm not saying replace it. It still does the job pretty well. It just turns out the original system does it better. So thank you for watching, everybody, and I will catch you next time. Love you all. Mwah!